concavity will tell us that the behavior of the curve either is concave upward like this hand or concave downward like this hand. So we can use second derivative to find the concavity when we had a second derivative which is bigger than zero or we can say it's a positive, it means concave upward. Meanwhile, if we have the second derivative which is a negative value, it means that it's concave downward. So concave upward, we have the minimum value. Meanwhile, concave downward, we have the maximum value. So what if now we combine these two curves? At what particular point, this point is the point where we change from concave upward to become concave downward. And that particular point is what we call as the inflection point. And it has the value of d2y over dx2, which is equivalent to zero. Let's see an example here. Here we have a cubic function curve, which is represented by x cubed plus 3x squared plus one. Since this is a cubic function, so this is why we have two turning points. At, at a certain point, we have the inflection point where it's changed from concave downward to become concave upward. At that particular point is what we call as an inflection point. So how do you find it? First, we are interested in the turning point. So how do you find turning point? We know if they are a turning point, the gradient must be zero. So we find the gradient function first, so it's easier for us to know the gradient. So three go down, we have three x squared plus when two go down, three times two is six x and the derivative of a constant is zero. So this is why we say that the gradient function is 3x squared plus 6x. In order to find the turning point, the gradient must be zero. So we can say that dy over dx must be equivalent to zero. So 3x squared plus 6x is equivalent to zero. In order to find x value, we're going to factorize it first. So 3x can take it out and everybody divided by 3x because those are the highest common factor. So after that, we just need to simplify it. We have x plus 2 is equivalent to 0. So 3x equal to 0 or x plus 2 equal to 0. Why? Because either one of the expressions 0, we have answer as 0. So x equal to 0 or x equal to negative 2. So those two are our turning points. And in order to find the y, uh, the y coordinate, we just need to substitute our x back into the equations. So when it's zero, we know y is equal to one. When x goes to negative two, let's try to find it out. So we have negative two cubed plus three, negative two square plus one. So this one we have negative eight plus 12 plus 1. So why this is why we have y is equal to 5, as we can see in the diagram. So after we know the coordinate of our turning points, which is 0, 1, and negative 2, 5, we want to prove that this indeed is a maximum or minimum, or minimum or maximums. So how can we do this one? We can just try to use the d2y over dx2. As you can recall, whenever we have a positive means concave upward. Concave upward means that we have a minimum. Concave downward, we have the maximum. So this is the d2 over dx2. How can we do this one? We just differentiate one more time again. So this is why we have 6x plus 6. So this one is the d2y over dx2. So let's try to plug in the value of x into these functions to check that whether it's a minimum or maximums. So once we plug it in, we have 6 for the 0, 1 coordinate. And when we plug in negative 2 into this one, we have negative 6. So positive, what do they mean again? It means concave upward. So is this one supposed to be the minimum point? Which is right, we show by this graph. Meanwhile, negative means concave downward. So this is why we have the maximum point and indeed it proved by this one. So this is why we say concave upward, minimum point, concave downward is the maximum point. But there's one more point that we are curious is which is the 
inflection point. So we're going to look at inflection point. How can we find inflection point? Inflection point basically is the point where we change from the concave upward to become concave downward. So they are not downward and they are also not upward. So we can say that they are neither of these two. So they are d2y over dx2 which is 0. So try to find out how, what is the x value when it's 0 first. So 6x is equal to negative 6, x is equivalent to negative 1. So when x goes to negative 1, this is the inflection point. In order to find the y value, we just need to plug in our x equal to negative 1 back into the equations. So this is why we have y equal to negative 1 cubed plus 3, negative 1 square plus 1. Which basically we have negative 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4, minus 1 is 3. This is why we have y is equal to 3. So now we have the inflection point, which is negative 1, 3. So let's look at the graph now. So now we have this part of the portion is concave upward and concave downward. And we know negative 1, 3 is the point where the concavity is changing. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.